we are going to be taking your calls in the shower, open phones, first time callers yet again on all the news already covered in the last hour and the news that's uh, coming up in this hour. But we're also going to be getting into the Muslim Brotherhood and others blowing up and burning down and mass murdering Christians uh, as usual and how that ties in to Homeland Security and their fake war on terror. It's really a war on our liberties. Uh, we're going to get into the latest uh, developments with Fukushima. Uh, TEPCO admits Fukushima 1 reactor is still leaking radioactive water into the Pacific. Guess where that comes? Right over here. But when the uh, federal government discovers the tuna are filled with radiation, their answer is just keep feeding it to us. And we're also going to be getting into a host of other articles uh, that are up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And first off, when we come back uh, in the next segment, I am going to get into the Obamacare showdown being reported by the Hill newspaper and uh, really what Obamacare signifies and uh, what that means and the 1,200 days left uh, with Obama in office. And Obama saying Trayvon looks like the sun and now Trayvon looks like him. If you didn't hear that a few days ago, literally trying to now make himself the victim. So they make Trayvon a victim, which he clearly at some level was a victim and we're sad for him and his family. And then they transfer that, 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 that manipulation onto Obama. And, and this is just basic mind control. In fact, everybody's been playing that for days. We haven't played that yet. Can you guys get me the Obama clip where he says, uh, I, uh, I, I, I could have been Trayvon. And then and maybe we clip it together with, uh, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. I, I want to play that just so people can hear that again. A president. I mean, I tune into MSNBC now, and it is like a hallucination. The race baiting, the division, the lying. Everyone wants to turn their guns in. Everyone wants open borders. Everyone knows America's racist. Everyone knows white people are bad. Everyone knows Obama loves us. Every, I mean, it's like, like everyone knows we love taking cyanide. Everyone knows we love being thrown into meat grinders. Everyone knows we love being fed to sharks. Everyone, everyone, everyone loves checkpoints on the highway. Everyone loves the government funding Al-Qaeda. Everyone, lo yeah, Congress has a 10% approval rating. Some polls are 9%, some are 15%. Uh, the Obama's plunging in the polls, but everyone loves him. Everybody knows that the moon's made of cheese. Everybody knows that Bill Clinton did not have sex with that woman. Uh, 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 look how happy Bill Clinton looks. Big sellout to the New World Order looks like a zombie. Look at all these New World Order people. Like... Uh, Schmidt, the head of Google, who has dozens of, of girlfriends and basically has jumbo jets, they admit, with flying harems on them in his open marriage and is reportedly into all sorts of weird stuff. But he says, you don't have any privacy, but he's obsessed with his. In fact, I saw this article in Daily Mail. Will you guys print that again for me or we'll show it? Where his girlfriends, when he's out with them, they wear veils. So he's obsessed with privacy, but he wants to know what you've got growing on your tally walker. I mean, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I mean, this is, this is unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen, that this guy wants to know if you have breast implants. This guy wants to know where you go eat, what you do, so he can predict the future and run your life and sell the data to big corporations to game you and your family. I have news on that today. How these high-end stores have face scanning cameras in them to, to, to game yeah, scroll down to his girlfriend covering her faces. To, to, to game. The name of the game is gaming. Oh, they know you, you'll buy something. They know you'll be ripped off. They know you'll pay more. They know they have the intel on you, and they're going to rape you hard. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. We are opening the phones up for first time callers on any of the plethora of news items and issues I covered in the last hour. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231.
And yes, ladies and gentlemen, you have found it, the tip of the spear in the fight for basic human liberty. I am your host, Alex Jones. We're not left or right. We're about doing the right thing. I am a constitutional libertarian, and I know that we have a private, corporate, global government forming that has made itself above the law, the new royalty with diplomatic immunity. And they are engaged in a scorched earth, ruthless process of establishing a planetary corporate government. I am here to resist that and try to wake folks up. First time callers, 800-259-9231. Okay, let me just recap uh, the situation, and I'm going to get to some new news on Obamacare and then your phone calls, and then the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and Al-Qaeda just slaughtering Christians all over the Middle East under U.S. government funding. I mean, our government is absolutely over-the-top evil, and they, they know they can get away with it because it's so over-the-top. And overnight, they're like, it's not for Al-Qaeda now. You're all the terrorists. Conservative libertarian veterans, you're going to attack any minute now. When you do, we're going to put you in re-education centers. The Army's training, but that's no big deal. I mean, it's just beyond insanely evil. But it's so over the top, you're like, I can't even compute our government publicly runs Al-Qaeda and publicly is training to take our guns and publicly buying thousands of armored vehicles and billions of rounds of ammo and ordering posters of kids to shoot them called No More Hesitation. I mean, it's just, it's, it's all twilight zone. And then they have the media, you know, up there lying about me. Well, there's no bullets. There's no armored vehicles. There's no FEMA camp plan, even though it's all on record. Alex Jones believes giant wasp live under the UN building. I never said anything like that. Alex Jones says Obama runs every tornado. Never said that. You know, Alex Jones is racist. Never said that. And now they've caught the Democrats. This is up on Infowars.com. We've given some of the uh, history uh, of it as well. Having people with signs saying we're racist and chanting uh, that they're racist. Uh, and, and, and this is the same thing that we've seen over and over and over again. So we're going to be getting uh, to more of that after I take your phone calls. But here it is. Representative Luis Gutierrez calls for House hearings on Trayvon Martin and gun control. And I heard him and other congressmen this morning on MSNBC saying, we've got to pass gun control and we've got to get rid of concealed carry federally for Trayvon. Now, how about for the a globalist mafia, that's why they want our guns. Government arming of the teeth, they want our guns. Two plus two equals four. NRA, Holder exploiting Trayvon Martin death to push gun control. The Hill. NRA blast Holder for pushing gun control on Trayvon Martin's back. Pelosi, Congress must uphold oath to protect and defend the Constitution by passing gun control. By the way, Pelosi has government paid for bodyguards with guns, and she has guns. But you ain't gonna gav them. You understand that, slave? That witch runs your life, bow to her and all the rest of them. So that's just some uh, of the news on that front here today. Now let's get to the Obamacare. Obama, give me free Obama. I want free house. You said Obamacare, not raise taxes on anyone, but it raises them on anyone working, even people being paid $18,000 a year. Obama, Obama, Obama. Uh, 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 that hurts, that hurts me. Oh, you look like a wolf, but you say you love me. Obama. Obama, uh, <laughs> Maybe we can find a sound of sheep being killed. They have varmint tapes online that you play to bring in wolves and coyotes. Can we get the sound of dying sheep? <laughs> it sounds like a person. Because that, that's you. And you're like, well, I don't like Republicans. How about a fake choice? You walk on a car lot and the guy's like, how are you doing? Good to have you here. I got all these beauties. 1976 Gremlin, perfect condition, no miles. I've got uh, other vehicles now. It's not like this vehicle was in a river and we, we drained it out and covered that up. <laughs> well, we got a really good deal for you. Well, we got two choices here on the lot for you and you're gonna buy one of them today. And then, and then they lean in to intimidate you to buy it. I say, I'm leaving. I'm not buying this. See, that confidence game with a country primed for mass Stockholm syndrome 
And if somebody's wearing a uniform, everybody wears uniforms now. Everyone bows down. Oh my gosh, you're in a janitor outfit. I better kneel. I, I think I could dress up in a janitor outfit if it had some flags on it and walk up and say, hello, sir, give me your wife. And the wife would probably say, absolutely. You are my master because uh, everybody's watched, you know, I Dream of Jeannie. I mean, I guess they've been programmed like that to sit there and do anything they're told because that's what the sheep all do. I like my vaccines. Really, the Gardasil shots in their own trials killed a large percentage of people that took it and, and injured thousands. And uh, all these governments have banned it. India, Japan, and it just keeps killing people. It doesn't even protect you. The insert says doesn't protect you from the thousands of strains of papillona. It's a total hoax. And Rick Perry saying it's a law to take it is a total hoax. This is a eugenics operation. It's been connected to infertility. Please uh, don't talk like that. That scary man, Obama looks like Trayvon. Obama could be Trayvon. He is a victim of white races, races, races. Hey, the government's a wolf. It's taking your rights. It's run by foreign banks. That's what the racists say. Okay, that's enough. I'm going crazy here. Let's go to our leader. First, Trayvon looked like his son and personalized it. Justice Department running the whole operation. Now... Now, now, he is Trayvon. How dare the white people of America do this to our savior, our royalty, the man who stands above Joe Biden. Let's go ahead and play the clip. Um, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. And um, when uh, Trayvon Martin was first shot, uh, I said that this could have been my son. Obama. Uh, uh, another way of he saying that is me. Uh, Trayvon Martin could have been me uh, oh. 35 years ago. And when you think about why, in the African-American com community at least, um, there's a lot of pain around what happened here. Uh, I think it's important to recognize We're here that, to put salt in the wounds as much um, as possible to distract you from the foreign banks I work for, raping everybody. At this issue through uh, a set of experiences and a, right, that's and a history. Yeah, he goes on to say, I'm used to when I walk through a parking lot, people lock the doors. Yeah, when I get in my car and then I turn it on and I'm in a parking lot, I lock the door. And, you know, I'm a man and, and I've been walking through parking lots and seen women kind of look at you and got their purse because people are living in fear. I'm a white guy. And, and I'm sure there are some people out there that stereotype and think black guys about to rape, you know, rape them or do something. My whole issue is if I see guys with wife beaters with like devil tats and they're bugging their eyes out at me and, you know, uh, they're white, they're Hispanic, they're black, whatever, I start kind of paying attention to them. But absolutely, you know, if I'm in, in, in an, you know, especially in a poor area and I see guys walking like they're thugs down the street, I don't care what color they are. I go, that guy looks like they're a thug and looks like they're tough. Okay. If they try to shake me down, I'm just going to say, I'm going to ignore them and keep walking. And if they come up to me and try to put a hand on me, I'm going to punch them right in the throat. Because I don't want to jump on top of them and hurt my knees and stuff when I slam their head in the ground. Plus, I don't want to kill them. Because then I have to go to jail and stuff, and then they have to find that I didn't, you know, that it was done in self-defense. Been down that road. So I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to punch this guy in the throat. I'm thinking, how hard am I going to punch him? And, 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 and I'm not thinking he's a black guy. I'm thinking the guy's walking like a thug, thinks they're tough, and I'm thinking about how I'm going to defend myself. Just like when I've been at the coast a few years ago and walk out of a restaurant uh, in South Padre, and they're having a biker rally. And it wasn't like a nice biker rally. Most rallies are nice people. It was like thug wannabes rode up with a motorcycle and were revving it, looking at me. And I was thinking, okay, all right, that guy's taking his helmet off. I'm going to punch him in the throat. The minute he tries to get up and do something, and then I'm going to assault those next three guys, then they'll probably pull a weapon. I need to take that. I mean, that's, that's I mean, like, zzz, that's what I'm thinking whenever something like that's going on. I can't help it. I'm thinking, all right, I'm, I'm ready to kill. I mean, I mean, that's just how I am. And, I, and I'm thinking, all right, all right, okay, instantly assess these guys. These are probably ex-con, real criminals. I've got my three kids here. Uh, that gives me, you know, just turbo dinosaur power. 
and I'm thinking, control yourself. Don't have a fight unless you've absolutely got to. You know, the man in me is ready to take them all on. And gosh, you're, you know what I'm talking about out there, don't you? You scum. I hate gang members and filth. And it has nothing to do with black people. But I will stomp your head in if you start a fight with me, you thug scum. Anyways, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. The point here is that they are simply trying to invoke a racial division here, and that's what he's doing. Because, I mean, I see it all the time. People are insecure. They go to a country club that's above their standard of their white. Or black folks will think, I don't want to go there. You know, uh, that's a, I mean, I had black friends in high school who were like, I don't really want to, you know, really want me to go to that golf course with you and go to that country club. You think people will like me there? You know, I get that, and there's Obama trying to invoke it. Let me tell you, people are looking at it at a country club nowadays. How sharp your car is, your posture, and how you're dressed. And do you act arrogant? If you act black, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, if you're black and you go in there and you act, uh, you know, like uh, you're the president, everyone will kiss your ass. If you sit there and you act like a thug and you're a white guy, everybody's going to want to throw you out of a place. That's what it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen. That's where all this goes. That's how all this sits there and operates. And the media is trying to tell us how we're supposed to act to create division. Your phone call's coming up. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states and the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. 
I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence that know this information is true but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. But I take my focus, I take my anger, I take it all, and I try to direct it towards the globalist. And to see them trying to invoke, bring back all the classism, racism, and to manage us makes me disgusted. And we have a graphic up on Infowars.com uh, that Anthony Frieda put together, Divide and Conquer, uh, that breaks it all down, exactly what the globalists are doing. I mean, people are absolutely integrating together. People are getting along better than ever. And I'm telling you, stuff like this is meant so the government can divide and conquer and manage everybody. I said I'd go to your phone calls. I'm going to go to your phone calls. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. And then when we come back from break, I will briefly get into uh, the showdown on Obamacare and a bunch of other news. And then we have Quan LX. So I shouldn't yell and scream on air. I lose my voice. Uh, joining us uh, to uh, to talk about the Black Panther, uh, new Black Panther Party rally they had yesterday, and all the things that happened down there, and uh, his take on all this. This should be interesting and informative. I'm gonna try to actually talk to this guy and say, really, really, this is all. We ought to get some Klan people on the show too. And uh, of course, Matt, I'll say Jones had the Klan on and said he loved them. She'll be like, but he had wonderful new Black Panther party on, so I guess it's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Andrew in Florida. You're on the air. Welcome. Hello, Alex. This is Andrew. Um, first time caller. I wanted, wanted to say real quick, I appreciate what you do and every day, and uh, and I, I do what I can to figure things out and do my own research. And I just wanted to bring up a specific point. Um, I'm an employee at a uh, local grocery store. I'm not going to uh, use any names, but um, I, I've investigated a certain type of drinking water for babies called uh, nursery water. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that on the air, but... Yeah, but I know all about it. I've probably shot, I'm, let's not exaggerate, 20 reports on it uh, where it even has higher levels than what... The, 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 they have come out and they have said... Uh, what, seven years ago, the American Dental Association said stop brushing kids' teeth with fluoride. It causes fluorosis, cracking of teeth, and reduction of IQ. They've said take it out of pesticide that they spray on crops because it bioaccumulates. Uh, and they've also uh, gone around and uh, had to admit because the lawsuits and the science. And they had, I, I bashed government all day. They had 97% of the toxicologists and 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 scientists at the um, Environmental Protection Agency in 2000, and again in 2005 or so, and then again two years ago, send letters with their names saying, "Take this out of the drinking water." And the and the answer was, "We'll go from 1.6 part per million federally recommended uh, to one point." Uh, Zero seven, so they cut it basically in half. That's still deadly. And and again, yes, everywhere the the government has been forced to say, don't give babies fluoride water. I mean, you might as well literally give them a lobotomy. And I mean, I've, I've drunk that nursery water on air. I mean, it you can taste the chemical in it. I mean, it tastes like pool water, folks. And it's for the kids. And by the way, I was in a CVS. The manager came over. He goes, you're the one shot that video in here. I know my store. And I went, yeah. And he goes, uh, well, I, I looked that stuff up because we were thinking about suing you. And I guess it's true. Besides, nobody buys it anymore. I've heard it's going to be discontinued. 
I went, well, then why are you bucking up to me? What, you're six foot four, so they made you the manager, and you're now kind of getting in my space. I said, I'm trying to help kids. Stop bugging your jaw out at me. I mean, I'm sorry. That's how I am. Get off my back. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead and make your point about it. No problem. Uh, actually, I just think it's a little strange and, and, and in a weird way kind of funny. Um, when you look at the packaging for this, uh, for this type of water, I'm pretty sure you've noticed it. It, it provides the information that fluoride is added, like it's a, like it's a huge benefit. And it's like I, I look at this, and, and the way I read it is like with fluoride added, like it's good for your children. And and I think it's pretty insane, in my opinion. Uh, if anyone does any basic research on fluoride, and uh, I did a little investigation on the uh, the supposed um, usage by Hitler on his uh, death camps with his... No, that's in sheer rise and fall of the Third Reich. He got it from the Soviets. It's a fact since about 1925, the Russians, with U.S. government advisors from the Rockefeller Brother Foundation, uh, were spiking the water with about three parts per million. They, that, that becomes so obvious, though, we're not good androids for them, that it slows you down too much. Uh, in a work camp, you only want about one part per six, 1 1.6 parts per million. That's why we get work camp dosages. America, you can't blame America for being zombies. We've been under chemical attack since the 1950s, okay? We'll be right back with more of your phone calls. Stay with us. Viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro-Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review and more coming in the month of June to the info war let's just go to your calls right now let's talk to Andrew in the UK you're on the air ah hello Alex hey buddy good to finally good to finally talk I'll call yesterday but it's probably hold 40 minutes then I have to walk the dog anyway I've got you linked in right now, which I do pretty much every day on infoaudio.net. So that's my thing in the United Kingdom. Awesome. So, awesome. so yeah, I don't know how many listeners you've got stateside, but I'm sure it's kind of double that over here now. Because I've been on since the 29th of February of last year. And to be honest with you, I hadn't heard of Alex Jones. The only Alex Jones I knew about was the BBC One Presents. I don't know if you're aware of her on the one show. So somebody says, have you heard Alex Jones? I went, that woman on BBC One? He goes, no, but no, the guy off from Austin, Texas, does Infowars.com. So then I had a look at your site. I thought, all right, this guy's opinionated. He's outspoken. So it's good to know that there's other people out there that are willing to take that risk and talk out loud. Well, uh, worldwide, uh, the broadcast is growing, and, and I just see that as a metric, a measurement of the global awakening. And it's different strokes for different folks. Uh, you know, there's different... Uh, you know, ideas out there, but overall, we know we're going in the wrong direction. We know we're going into a planned global economy run by some very nasty people, and it's time to wake up. Uh, what percentage of Brits do you really think uh, are actually fawning and worshiping over the new royal baby? I mean, I, I, I think Kate Middleton is attractive and seems like a nice lady because she is a commoner. I mean, and I'm not against inbred elites just because they're inbred elites. I'm against them because of what they do. But worshiping a bunch of inbred mental midgets on average, I mean, why, why am I supposed to worship someone? I mean, we all know people whose dad gave their son a business and the person's a jerk and we don't like them because, you know, they were given everything. And, and they're usually jerks because they don't appreciate anything. We all know that, but we all admire self-made men and women, at least I do. And, and But then there's also people who've been given a lot, but who've also done a lot with it, and then you admire them as well. Uh, but, but, but just the royalty and then everyone bowing down to them, I mean, it's absolutely disgusting. But uh, I've asked my question, what you calling about? Mm. Yeah, just to say that I've got your LinkedIn to infoaudio.net. Like I say, I run 
I, I, I start to do my live show after you, you finish about nine o'clock. I think I'll patch you in about five, six in the afternoon because of the time delay. Then I'll do my thing. I do a news section at ten. I did a big section on the royal family. I don't like the worship of wealth. It ain't, you know, they're human beings after all. And that baby's going to be brought up in, you know, flash photographer. Getting, when she comes out of the hospital, you know what it's going to be like. They're going to be all paps there. And she'll just come out for a few photos. They'll do 32-page pullouts for it. It's this sort of worship of wealth that I don't like. And I'm not a royalist, obviously, but I'd say, in answer to your question, the percentage of people, I'd say 10 to 20 percent. You know, it's the, it's the older generation that will stand and wait for the Queen to come out to wave and go past. You know, the, the, the youth of today, they ain't interested in that. In fact, the way I promote my, what I do, InfoAudio.net, is via fake money. I print counterfeit money with my logos on it. I've got a £5 issued out there. And we're doing a £10, a £20. You know, that's a great pounds. idea. I want to come back out, because they have the conspiracy notes. I want to come back out with a global government currency and make it like a joke, but have factoids all over it. Uh, and and uh, maybe we'll do one like Vampire in Chief with the Queen of England and then another that has, you know, a eugenesis mass murderer in chief, David Rockefeller. I've been wanting to do that for a while. That's a great idea. And hand bills, hand it out to people, then get them to your site. You can generally get enough ad revenue off that, even with automated systems, to pay for more hand bills. And then you, you, you self-fund getting the word out using a free market. That's how you do it. Uh, absolutely. Anything else, sir? Anything else, sir? Yeah, that's it, Alex. Basically, I'm a self. I'm a self funder. I don't. I don't advertise on my site. It's a dot net. It's not a dot com. Info audio dot net. It's not a dot com. Is that, no, no. I think self funding is great. If you're a doctor or a businessman or woman, and you have extra money, donating it to the fight, doing it yourself, uh, is beautiful. Or have a hobby of a YouTube channel. Whatever. All of us doing a little something will bring the globalists down. Yeah, to be honest with you, though, I'm I'm kind of happy not advertising that. But that way, I've got, got no, I don't have to answer to sponsors or anything like. That. I can I can actually talk freely. I've got friends who are printers; they'll print it real cheap. I mean, it's the paper. Yeah, but here's the deal: you don't have to answer for sponsors. There's a lot of automated ad systems where you can approve and disapprove. They just come to you, and they go into an automated market, and you say your price, and then and, you know, say you only accept libertarian or anti-globalism advertising. I mean, look, they've made it dirty to make money because they want to make it all and then use their control of the market to shut us off. God bless you. I appreciate your call. You know, it's come out that came out 15 years ago when I first saw it, that high end stores everywhere through a d database of digital driver's license photos in a global database is they sell this data. A lot of businesses have a secondary thing of selling data. When you go in to a Barnes and Noble or you know whatever these stores are that have the face scanning systems. They know what you read, what you buy, your size. They know how much you spend. And they now have screens that will direct their salespeople to who really has money. Now folks, that's an invasion of your privacy, okay? And they want you to get a customer loyalty card because that's a contract allowing them to use all the data and sell your data. And there it is, high-end stores use facial recognition tools to spot uh, VIPs. And uh, that's a story. What is that out of Forbes? Uh, NPR also reported on it. But the bigger issue, and I have it here in my stack, is they're using it to cheat you. In fact, stores use facial recognition to gouge uh, wealthy shoppers. But it's not really even wealthy. If you surf fancy things... The, the computer thinks, oh, you're buying yachts. No, maybe I was doing research on politicians buying yachts with taxpayer money. Or maybe I was looking at uh, researching a jet that went down. I'm not really going to be buying a $25 million jet or whatever. It doesn't matter. You do that. I mean, I've gone and looked at jets. I've gone and looked up globalists. I've gone, and then next I'm getting, you know, Russian uh, Fabergé egg advertisements, uh, you know, a year later on my computer. I went and looked up the Mercedes that Michael Hastings was in. We looked at it on computers all over the office. Now there's Mercedes ads everywhere. Now I'm getting mail for the Mercedes <laughs> at my house, the exact Mercedes. You see how that works, folks? I mean, you need to be aware of this. And so they're all using the system to game us. And then meanwhile, we're like, oh, we... We better not write a book and sell it. My goodness, I don't want to profiteer off my ideas. I, well, folks, 
You've got to sell things to build a base, to build an operation. You, you, you could write a book and give it out for free. And if you already have money, that's fine. That's a labor of love. Half the time, people don't even appreciate it if it's given to them for free. And we give most of what we do out for free, but we've got to do enough to pay for things. What I'm looking for is unlocked minds. That's my treasure. I'm looking for freedom, a future. I'm a bleeding heart libertarian. I'm a bleeding heart fan of humanity. I'm a bleeding heart lover of humanity, lover of art, lover of goodness, lover of courage, lover of beauty, lover of life. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Hate scum, hate thugs, hate tyrants, hate criminals, hate gangs, hate because they're scum. They're parasites. And when I see a parasite, a, a tick attached to my dog that I missed in between its toes, it's been there for two weeks. I'm ashamed I didn't look over the animal. I'm ashamed I haven't given it a bath. I'm ashamed it's got a tick big and fat and then I didn't get that tick off and I pull that tick off and I take it outside and I grind it into the ground because I don't like parasites. It's like good dentists will tell you, you think it's gross pulling out rotten teeth and pus coming out and stuff. There's like a satisfaction, but it's not that you like pus. It's like you like healing. You like removing the pus. You like helping people. Not because you're some goody two-shoe who does it from a fake perspective to act like you're a good person, but because it's who you want your children to be. It, it's who you are. It's what flows from you. So they come to good people and go, oh, you shouldn't have a radio show and make money. How do you think you build an economy? How do you think you build a new media? You've got to go out and you've got to put the information out, do the best research you can, and then sell products you already use that, that you know were good to share with others and give them a good price so that they can communally, but in an individual way, vote with their dollars and vote up the organic food, vote up the best vitamins and supplements, vote up the best films, vote up the best culture, the best t-shirts, the best art, the best ideas, vote up. You have to choose with your dollars, with your decisions, with your feet, what you promote to crush the enemy instead of them force feeding. I mean, my, I don't let my children watch television unless it's like archaeology shows, history shows, hunting, fishing shows, things like that. But whenever we go to a hotel or something, and we flip through the children's channels, it's every channel is, be gay for stuff targeting seven-year-olds. And it's like, oh, but it's politically correct. Let them sexualize children if it's gay. And I'm offended by that. It's like, you're a bigot if you don't let us sexualize your kids. See, they couldn't say, hey, teach your kid, teach your seven-year-old daughter how to go out and find a sugar daddy. You'd be like, that's pedophilia. But see, if it's, hey, kids, be gay, it's, oh, well, that's just, you know, tolerance. See, the, the truth is the globalists are a bunch of degenerates, folks. And so it's the thrill of sexualizing a child. That's all they've got left is screwing up wholesome good things. And it makes me want to beat people's brains out. I mean, that's a normal response to messing with people's kids. And it's going to get worse and worse. I mean, the public schools, I, I have a curriculum article. You guys gave it to me and I can't find it. Will you print it again? Where they're now going to teach the racism of guns and how they're meant to kill black people. That's the party line. Of course they were coming out with that. And, and how they teach five-year-olds that two daddies and that men have sex together and, and that women have sex together. And then you could say, oh, whatever, don't be a square, Alex. I bet you like, you know, women are together or whatever. You know, all the, well, I like beauty, period. But, but the, whole, the whole point is, is that I know where it leads, where it goes. And then you're sitting there shoving it on five-year-olds? Five-year-olds shouldn't even be thinking about that. They're ruining natural discovery. They're ruining normal behavior. And all the studies show when you make a child mature early, you are actually abusing their psyche and their IQ and their development, and it stunts their development. It's like if you take steroids when you're 10 years old, it's going to fuse your growth plates and you're going to be a midget. If you take them when you're 14, you're, 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 you're going to have four years of growth you're not going to get. Do they tell people that? No, that's Steve. So, so it's like they go, oh, you're just anti-gay. Yeah, the, the fish, the frogs are coming out bisexual. They're like, what are you against that? Are you against their sexual preference? They are having their sexual preference taken. They're being attacked. I want to go to this fluoride report. The guys found it. There's like 
and no exaggeration, I've probably done 20, 30, 40 reports on nursery water. And, and they've got like with the school buses, all these brands, and it says, going to school, get your fluoride moms. And the moms, I see them at the store going, and I walk over and go, ma'am, please look up the study on fluoride. Because I'll be in the water, I'll see a woman putting her thing, I go, hey, how you doing? Oh, and I mean, I do this because I care. I mean, I'd be a weirdo if I didn't render aid. And I go, listen, I don't want to get in your business, but I know, you know, fluoride, calcium fluoride, a little bit helps the teeth. We need everything. We need a little bit of arsenic, you know, we need a little bit of cyanides and apples. But I said, listen, they, they, they've actually said reduce the amount of fluoride out there. It's actually causing dental fluorosis and stuff a lot, stuff a lot worse. Uh, will you just look up the Harvard study? And the woman's like, sure, but, but I'm a man, so they don't really listen. They listen to the advertisement because the TV patronizes them and talks to the women. Oh, you're the boss now. You're the. But if I was a woman, then women tend to listen to women. I've watched this. I've seen my wife talk to people about it. And then women will actually listen to her. I mean, since when does a woman not want to listen to a man going, hey, I see you got your kids here. You just bought that. That's really going to hurt your kids. Please just look it up. And, and I had one woman go, they can put anything on the Internet. And I said, listen, it's a Harvard study. This is just about six months ago. And my kids now have gone from saying, Daddy, don't. Now they're not even embarrassed. That's good. When I'm at the grocery store or I'm at a gas station, now they're the ones telling people. Because at first, they need to get past being embarrassed. Slaves are embarrassed. Slaves are scared to speak out. Slaves sit there and take chemical weapons advertised on a hook for kids, like a worm for a bass. Here, kids. It's fluoride for the children with the smiley kids getting on the school bus with, you know, drawn with little kids and, you know, stick figures with a puppy. Oh, it's nursery water for kids, the school bus. You know, it's like a six pack of water with a school bus on the side with kids on the plastic packaging around it, getting on the school bus. Yeah, getting on the brain damage cancer bus. I mean, I would be a scumbag if I didn't talk to those people. Let's go to this clip. There I am videotaping this, it. bombarding you everywhere with stuff that poisons you. Fluoride, which the American Dental Association has admitted for five years. Children under five shouldn't even brush their teeth with it or drink it. Now this is two years Take ago, so it's five years ago. Now it's seven. Nursery water for the baby with fluoride. And then you go down this aisle and it's you versus the flu at CVS. Get your flu shot when they admit that it doubles your chances of getting the flu the next year, big Canadian studies, and they admit they've never guessed the year before what the flu's gonna be the next year. I mean, total hoax, totally worthless. Three flu shots and you double your chances of getting Alzheimer's. Just, just Google that, search it, look it up, they admit it. And then down here, more anti-human propaganda. Just everywhere is propaganda. Oh, CVS, you know, buy their product because it's earth friendly. And again, there's a lot of reasonable stuff environmentally, but they tag this onto the whole eugenics, anti-human agenda. It's all about bossing you around, making you feel guilty. And you go through this place, it is just everywhere. Everywhere. And every store you go to just bombards you. You need fluoride for your kids. You need mercury filled, you know, uh, vac vaccines. Uh, you need all of this. I, mean, I noticed they. They, they push it in the chemical aisle as well. The flu shots, which is where it really should be. Oh, look, right by the fluoride nursery water in the pharmacy area, you've got the mercury-filled vaccines. And of course, all of this is just ongoing. This is, this is what I'm bombarded with yeah, everywhere. Take the shots. I mean, did you notice how you're being bombarded? Do you like it? Drink the water. Your kid will never talk again. Isn't that nice? Isn't that cute? Hey, you, you want a brain damaged kid? You got to change their diapers till they're 35? Hey, drink some nursery water, baby. <sighs> By the way, nursery water, uh, whatever company puts that on, you guys sue me. Come on, let's go. Let's get in court. I'm going to walk in with all the studies, all the facts. But they don't, you see. They don't. It's all a sick joke to them. And by the way, they all know full well what they're doing. Just like Bayer knew it was put in those factor eight HIV and hepatitis for all those little kids. Cause they love you and your family. They love children dying slowly. They love robbing you of your intellect. They love lobotomizing you and your family. You're all under globalist chemical warfare, bio warfare, GMO warfare attack. And we're all supposed to just sit here and take it and love it. Cause the government's gonna protect us from Al Qaeda. They publicly run. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com.
slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Let's go back to your phone calls. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Thank you for joining us. Let's talk to uh, Ernie in Michigan. Thank you for holding. You're on the air worldwide. How you doing, Alex? Pretty good, sir. Long time listener, first time caller. I was just trying to uh, get people uh, a little hip to how to get off the grid. Um, are you familiar with power converters? A little bit. I'm not. I'm not an electrician, if, if that's what you mean. Well, I'm an electrician, so uh, like when I go to a home that has no electricity, and sometimes, like here in Michigan, we have a lot of uh, copper theft, so they still all the wires up, and I have to rewire the house. So what I do, I go in with a power converter, and I hook it to my car, which can be adapted to like home use, where you can take just uh, a car battery, an alternator, and a fan blower motor, which uh, runs your heat in your car, and actually make a self-sustaining power system. I know there's all sorts of alternative energy things being suppressed with the fake clean energy movement they've got. It's really just a boondoggle bank robbery transfer to globalist. But again, they already control the issuance of currency and credit. They're waging war on the physical economy with their fiat economy. Uh, how is Michigan doing up there? Beautiful state, but how are you doing under the wonders of NAFTA and GATT that Al Gore told us would be so wonderful? Terrible. We're actually going into bankruptcy. The city is going into bankruptcy. Well, that's the plan for all of us. We're going into bankruptcy to the globalists and their whole fiat system. Yeah, actually, since I've been listening to you, I've actually been spreading the word to a lot of people how they've been turning countries into companies and bankrupting the company and taking the country. And I was like, that's just mind-boggling. Oh, yeah, well, they've set it up, too, where they take existing profitable companies and bankrupt them or create a subsidiary, steal the pensions, and now they're even taking private bank accounts and not getting in trouble because they got paramilitary SWAT teams that were set up to fight al-Qaeda, who they run, trained and ready and, and and they want a civil war and they're going to start one you know uh, that's the issue they're going to blow stuff up blame it on us roll it out and, and and that's the program and we either totally wake up to the hoax or they win yeah i've been watching like closely very closely like this is like crazy uh are, are you familiar with moorish americans not familiar with what sir moorish american moors uh, the uh, folks from uh, North Africa? Uh, yeah, they actually, uh, they were in America, too. Like uh, No, 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 I understand, like but the Moors, the Moors are from North Africa. That's the group that invaded Spain. Yes, yes. They, they and, 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 and the original La Reconquista was, was taking Spain back from them. But, yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, uh, but they got laws, actually, with, uh, on American books. Stating that they get like some things free because you know the Moors are the Indians too, but they change the names. Yeah, I'm confused like, about. I'm confused about what what group is. Send me some info. We got to end this hour. Ask yourself, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Uh, let's go ahead now and talk to Nick in New Jersey. Can Quan LX defeat the White Cracker? Find out coming up. Nick in New Jersey, you're on the air. Yeah, how you doing, Alex? We're about to see the battle between the Super Friends and the White Cracker. Sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm a first-time caller. i uh, been listening to you for many years. And I really enjoyed this Paul Revere contest that you put out. Uh... I've probably watched about hundreds of the films, and I've enjoyed each and every single one of them. Um, I just want to congratulate you on such a great effort, and I'm really looking forward to see who wins this contest. Are you my pal, Nick? Hey, yes, I am, sir. No, I'm being sorry. I'm doing more Ted Knight. I apologize. Oh, Billy, oh. Billy, Billy. Sir, have you seen Caddyshack? No, I have not. 
Probably a greater, okay, I don't know, I get a goofy mood sometimes, I apologize. Probably a greater film than even The Godfather. Cinematic virtuoso of, uh, do you do drugs, Billy? Uh, all right, I'm, I don't. Uh, that's good, Billy. No, I, I, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, no, this, this, this contest is incredible, Nick. And 600 plus entries, hundreds and hundreds of awesome ones. I don't know who to pick. In fact, maybe I should open the phones up for an hour Friday or something where callers can call in. Who do you think, what do you think the best film is up there at Infowars.com forward slash Paul? Danny. I mean, Nick, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to say one thing. I, I mean, I, I saw the article posted yesterday about the finalists, and some of them were just really high-quality stuff. And I really, I've, I've watched some of them over, actually, because I saw them in the finalists. But I went down to the comments section, and I saw a lot of people very angry about uh, some of the selections for the finalists, um, mainly because they feel like some of the rules were broken to let these people contend to be a finalist. I mean... Every video, every video is a good video and deserves respect. Yeah, but I mean, listen, listen, and the rules are I'm going to pick whoever I want, and I'm going to pick people that I believe follow the rules. When you're watching 600 videos, I mean, you know, some people mention InfoWars, but they don't show InfoWars.com. I mean, is that rule really, really broken? We just kind of had some basic rules to get the riffraff out to make sure it was good filmmakers. So, I mean, anything like this, you're going to have people that aren't happy that they, you know, aren't the winner. But everybody should be happy because they entered the contest, brother. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I mean, everybody's a winner at the end of the day. But, um, you know, there's people who put probably tons of money and effort, and there's, they're not a finalist. I mean, I don't know who should be the finalist. That's a you got to judge. Fine, everyone's but, a finalist. But I'll pick, we're, we're, we're doing finalist to try to just focus in and that's one reason I'm holding off the next Wednesday to announce the first place, because I want to go back into, we picked 35, and I think those are pretty much some of the best, but then there's other ones that, that either are going to honorable mentions, or I don't know. I mean, it's torture. I mean, I'm the one that comes up with these crazy ideas. My team tries to implement them. And, I mean, can you imagine trying to watch 600 videos while you're running a syndicated radio show, nightly news, fending off globalist attacks, managing things, running a full-scale Easter Bunny farm? Well, um, I agree with you 100%. And actually, I don't blame you for some of the confusion or whatnot, but um, I guess my question is, uh, when you choose your finalists, is this going to be, I mean, when you choose the winners, is this going to be based solely off the finalists, or are you going to look through other ones? Because some people feel like they've been left out. Wow. Who is that? I mean, I mean, I mean, did you make a video? What is your video? I haven't made a video. I'm just, I'm just, I just read the comments yesterday, and I was just like, you know, I, I couldn't believe some of the stuff I was hearing, you know? Well, people get mad. Plus, trolls go in there, and it's a, it's a nice site, uh, the, the Paul Revere site, Infowars.com forward slash Paul. You can, you can comment and rate and things, and, you know, people really think, look, this is about fighting the New World Order. This isn't about winning the $100,000. They're putting cancer viruses in the vaccines. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.